Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Khan and I'm the Research Communications Manager at Blood Cancer UK and I am joined today by Dr Sian Lim who is a consultant haematologist and cancer immunologist based in Southampton. Thanks for joining us Sian. Um, Sian is also uh, leading one of our studies into vaccine effectiveness called Prosecco which is studying how effective the vaccines are in uh, people with lymphoma. Um, so without further ado, Sian, can you tell us a little bit more about Prosecco, uh, what it's hoping, hoping to find and the results so far? Yes, um, thank you, Rachel. Um, so Prosecco is an observational study. So what we've done here is we've collected blood uh, from patients with lymphoma uh, where we can before their vaccine and then at several time points after the first dose and second dose of the vaccine. Um, and we're looking at uh, lots of things, including antibodies and T cells, but so far we only have the result on the antibody levels. And, and I think the main key points um, of the study is that it shows that majority of patients, lymphoma patients, who are vaccinated whilst on lymphoma treatment or within six months of completion have either no or low antibody levels. So that's a really important point. And I think it's also reassuring that whilst the numbers are still small, uh, a few other studies who have researched in this area have also kind of shown kind of a similar result in terms of treatment and its effect on antibody levels. Um, the other interesting things we found um, is that there is also a difference in antibody response between um, the different types of lymphoma. So patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma and aggressive B-cell lymphoma, such as diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, they can develop robust antibody levels when vaccinated kind of more than six months after treatment. So there's a rationale for revaccinating these patients if they've previously received um, their vaccine whilst they're on treatment. And in contrast, um, patients with kind of indolent or low grade B cell lymphomas, like follicular lymphoma may have no or low antibodies even if they haven't had treatment. Now, we need more research to pick out who exactly are these patients so more work is is required it's uh it's really interesting and an important data and as you say we kind of we need to do a little bit more work to kind of truly understand who, who's most at risk and who's not so when do you think we'll know a little bit more when do you think we'll have some more data well um so in process so i reported um we report in lancet hematology uh, our data on the first 129 patients we've now recruited I think thanks to all the patients out there and everyone who's written emails and, and all the hard work of all the um, other sites, um, all, we've recruited over 400 patients from Prosecco. So we hope to get this data out in the next few months. But I think, you know, the whole community is working hard in trying to um, really publish their data and look at the various aspects of, of antibodies and T cells. And so I'm, I'm hoping it's, it's fast moving research and I'm hoping really in the next few months, we are going to know a lot more. And we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, and we'll, Blood Cancer UK will definitely pub publish something when, when we have more results. Um, so I guess my final question for you is, you know, personally, what advice are you giving to your patients at the moment? Um, so I've, I've received a lot of emails, as you can imagine, um, about, I think, uh, uh, from patients um, and also from people who are frontline workers who have lymphoma. And I think the main thing is, so don't, don't obsess about the antibody levels as such. You know, don't obsess, if you haven't got an antibody test, don't, don't obsess about getting one and don't obsess about the level. I think take a pragmatic approach. And, and I think uh, you, your risk of catching COVID is gonna depend on a number of things. It's gonna be antibodies, it's gonna be T cells. Um, and it's also probably going to be depending on the dose of viral load that you're exposed to. So take a pragmatic approach in that you wear a mask when you're indoors, um, open windows, maintain social distancing as much as you can. And, you know, and, and of course, please get yourself vaccinated um, and get everyone around you vaccinated. I think that's really, really helpful advice. Um, thank you very much, Diane. And we really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. So thank you so much. You're welcome.